Okay, this is video number two, and uh, I just did the closed captions on the first video, and that was painstaking. And, but while I was doing that, I realized a few things that I could um, cover, some housekeeping. Uh, the, the code for this game is up on GitHub under uh, my uh, GitHub username is CWMcGuire, so let's do github.com CWMcGuire snake game maybe and so you can get the code here i'm not trying to hide it from anybody let's go look at the snake.js so here's all the code so if you want to figure out how this is made you can go look here and the uh, snake.html is in there as well so that's the that's the full code if you want it i just don't want to uh, give it all away while i'm doing these videos also i noticed that the text was a little small in the last video so i increased the text size hopefully text size hopefully this is a little bit better and let's see we were going to draw on the canvas and first we were making the game loop so every uh, we use this set interval function and in in whatever time this is this is a thousand milliseconds so in 1000 millisecond intervals it'll call this hello function so here's our hello function now because this isn't in um, a function it's just sort of in the raw javascript file that's loaded over here in this html script tag as soon as this as soon as the browser renders up to this script tag it will load the file and start to run anything that's not in a function so it'll run this set interval we don't really want that we want to control when this gets loaded so what we're going to do is we're going to add another script tag at the end of the page and there's different ways you can do this uh, we'll do script and we'll call a start function and then we'll end our script tag so then over here and i'm using vim if i didn't mention that i may look at figuring out how to get um, obs to put what keys i'm typing in case you're interested in vim but you're probably not so let's do a start function I'm just going to flip back to my other code over here and figure out where I did that. Function start. All right. So let's go back to Vim. I need to switch screens, not apps. Uh, if you're curious what my apps are, uh, it's Vim, Chrome, iTerm2. Finder, Messages, Draw.io is a diagramming thing. Microsoft Teams I use for work. OBS is what I'm recording this with. System Preferences. Slack is what I use to chat. The Brave browser, which is based on Chrome. Uh, Keybase, which is an encrypted chatting um, app. Signal is an encrypted chatting app. And then I have some Microsoft Auto Updates. I use those because I have to use Microsoft for work. All right, so we have our start function. And in our start function, we want to kick off this uh, set interval. So we'll just, do, we'll just do function start right here. So there, now when it gets to the end of the file, it'll kick off this script tag and it'll run the start function and it'll kick off our set interval. So the whole point is drawing. So let's just set up some um, drawing whenever we hit start so let's have a i think i probably just called it a draw function let's see function i know you can't see what i'm typing here um, oh yeah we'll do canvas setup so that we can get set up to do some drawing i keep screwing up this mouse thing oh my goodness okay so let's do um uh, function we're gonna we have to do some uh, housekeeping for our canvas so we'll call it canvas setup. And then in here, we'll do canvas setup before we kick off our set interval, which is going to call um, probably our drawing function. So let's just change this to draw or yeah, we'll call it draw. And we'll change this to draw, excuse me. And in canvas setup, we're going to need to get the canvas, uh, the canvas object. So we can do that using document. This is part of the, the DOM, the document object model. It's part of, uh, it's a built-in object that comes um, sort of pre-built in JavaScript so you can access the web page you're working on. Document.getElement. 
by ID. And you can see over here that we named the canvas with an ID of canvas1. So we can go over here and say canvas1. And that will get us the actual object that represents the canvas. Now, in order to draw, this is weird. I don't know where this comes from, but you have to get a drawing context. I don't really know what that means, but you go canvas. Now that we have, this is our canvas object. An object will have properties and fields and methods and stuff on it. So we can call, it's probably a function, uh, get context, and then you tell it what kind of context. We want the 2D context. I don't even know if there is a 3D context or anything else, but that's what you have to do. So we, we're going to need to know in order to calculate what to draw on our canvas, we're going to need to know the width and the height. So we'll just do w equals canvas dot width. And then we're going to need the height equals canvas oh, dot height. And uh, I have in my other code, I logged this out. So I'll just show that in case, you know, this is pretty useful for debugging. You can say log. And then if you put these back ticks, anything in the back ticks will be interpolated, which means the value of it will be put in as if it was converted to a string. And we'll say canvas w for width is, and this is how you get that value interpolated in the string. You put a dollar sign and some curly brackets and inside the variable name. And you can see the variable name is the um, the W here, and we'll say comma h is dollar h, and then uh, so now we have our canvas. Now we can do some drawing, and I'm setting these um, the width and the height and the canvas and the context. Like I said, I've hacked this together. Um, I, I kind of wanted to do just some fun programming and I want to show people that aren't familiar with programming that you can just hack things together. So people will give you some grief if you do this, but I'm going to have some global variables that are accessible to the entire JavaScript file, which often isn't a good idea. You don't want multiple places in the same file having access to the same values because it's hard to tell sometimes why the value got changed, where in the code it got changed, especially when you have large files or large projects. But I'm going to have var w and var h. And uh, above that, we're going to have var canvas and var context. And actually, I'm going to change canvas to a uh, constant because it's not going to change. And oh, no, it is. Never mind. Uh, I, if I set the canvas to a constant here, then when I call canvas setup, I wouldn't be able to set it to a new value here. Constant means it cannot change. And you, you do that for your own sake so that if you think something shouldn't be changing and something some piece of your code tries to change it, you'll get an error. So we have our canvas set up. Let's see if we can draw something. Let's find function draw. I have draw the board. So let's draw the board. I'm looking for, I'm in the draw board vertical lines. I'm really just looking for, um, you know what, let's just, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say paste from the other file. I'm not going to type this in. So because I've I've saved the context in in a in a global variable, I can reference it within this function. The 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 var variables are accessible from uh, where they're declared and then everything inside them. The um, const and I think it's let declarations have different uh, scope. They're visible in different places. So I'm going to take that context and I'm going to set the stroke style. This is how you draw a line in JavaScript. You set the stroke style, which I'm just going to set it to white. Um, uh, let's see. In fact, I, oh, okay. So let's, let's change this to black. I have a, I had a black background in my game. You can see that here. And then I drew, you can see that I drew white lines on the black background. So let's just draw some black lines. And in order to draw a line, you say begin path. 
Um, and then you move to a wherever you want to um, draw. I'm going to move. We don't have anything in X yet or Y1. And then you say where you want to line to. So move to means move the cursor. I guess if you if you pictured having a pen that you're drawing with, move the pen to this area of the page, but don't put it down. And then when you say line to, now you're saying wherever you had moved to, put the pen down and then draw a line to this next, whatever you specify, your X, Y coordinates. And then you say stroke, and that will actually complete the line. So nothing gets drawn until you say context.stroke. So this is a little introduction to how to draw lines. Now we need to get our X and Y. So I am going to, I am going to just pick something. I am going to say const x equals 100 and const y1 equals, I don't know, 50 and const y2 equals 150. Get rid of that white space. Save that. So now what should happen? What do we think will happen? So we're going to load up our HTML page first. It's going to load up the, the script uh, because we have a script tag with a source, it'll load the script from this file, snake.js. And if there's any code that needs to be run, like these, var, that's not a function, like these var declarations, it'll run those and it'll create all these functions. Then it'll load up the body, create a canvas, and then it'll get to the script tag at the end and call start. And it will look in this HTML page and in any J JavaScript that we've loaded for a start function. Since we have a start function right here, uh, it'll run that, which will run canvas setup. So we can jump down to canvas setup and it'll get the canvas object from the document. It'll get the context from the canvas. It'll get the width and the height from the canvas. And those are all going to be set up here. And then it's going to uh, log out what the canvas width and height are and then set interval after canvas setup is done let's see, let me do some highlighting this is going to call draw every 1000 milliseconds or every one second so here's draw it'll console log hello we can just let's just change this to uh, draw called and <clears throat> then we'll set up some variables they're not really variables because they're constants but whatever we can call them variables uh, we'll set up X is going to be 100. That'll be 100 pixels from the left of the screen. And Y1 and Y2, those will be the number of pixels from the top of the screen. So 50 will be closer to the top. 150 will be farther from the top. So this line is going to be drawn down. You won't be able to see that. It'll be too quick. Then we'll set our stroke style. We'll start a path. Move to a particular, We'll move to X one is 100 and Y1 is 50. And then we'll line from there, from from 150 to 100, 150, and then we'll tell the canvas to stroke that line. So let's save our code, save our web page. We'll flip back here and we'll go to our new snake game that we've created. Now I've opened up, this might be a little bit hard to see, but I've opened up um, the developer tools a little bit bigger and I've paused the execution, but I'm gonna restart this. I'm gonna reload the page. So now you can see draw keeps getting called and we just keep drawing the same line over and over again. So we'll pause the execution by going to sources and we'll just click on pause here. And you can see that it says paused in debugger and it tells us exactly where it was paused. So we'll go back to our code. So that is how to get, how to call something at the end of your script, how to make sure it doesn't get called as soon as the script is loaded and we've seen um, how to set up a canvas, how to get the canvas, its context, its width, its height, and we've seen how to draw something on the canvas. And that'll be enough for this video.